Yeah, we yeah. don't know where they found him. He was just there. He's like Chinese Rambo. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually Chinese <laughs> Rambo. He, he actually is. He even has the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Bad Movies and Swedish Opinions. And today, Jimmy's on vacation, so it's me, Rudbe, and Victor. So that's why I'm doing introduction instead of Jimmy, since he normally always does it. And today we have watched this movie called uh, Robo Vampire. So guys... Uh, Give me your first thoughts about the movie. Yeah, uh, what's up with the title? Yeah, it makes no sense. It doesn't it should... describe the movie at all. It should be Robo versus Vampire or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh, we saw this movie before called uh, Nymphoid Barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. Uh, it's a bit similar because uh, the title really is misleading. Uh, it's true, there is a robot, but that robot is not a vampire as far as we know. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, this movie was both directed and written by a guy called uh, Godfrey Ho, and it was produced in year 1988, and it's free on YouTube. Yay. Right. If you, if you want to torture yourself. And, yeah. and get good laughs, I say. Yeah. yeah. There were a few good laughs, so I have to give it that. Yeah, th- there were some scenes, I admit, I, I laughed a ton, but uh, it, it has problems for sure. So uh, uh, does anyone of you want to try to <laughs> describe the story a bit, like a short summary? Oh, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, Well, there was uh, these uh, heroin smugglers who had control of some vampires for some reason. And uh, then there's some sort of task force or whatever it is that uh, are supposed to stop them. For some reason. Yeah. Yeah. This movie is very confusing and no one can deny that. And I would say that it has like several plots in the movie, and they almost seem separate from each other. Like the the big plot of the movie is that there is this uh, criminal organization, and uh, they present this like it's the most natural thing in the world. But they both uh, smuggle heroin, but they also uh, use uh, some kind of unholy magic to create. Uh, uh, Jiangxi, which are a kind of Chinese vampires. Jumping vampires. Yeah, they're even jumping vampires. And, and they, they jump around a lot, and it looks very, very funny. Yeah, not really intimidating. No. And the evil organization have some sort of guy, uh, I don't know, he uses magic or something. He's uh, the one who controls the vampires. Normally, I think we would have a section here where we try to describe the characters a bit, but um, in this movie, it's very, very difficult because we we don't really know the names of any character. There are like two people that are named. One uh, girl named Sophie, and the main character is apparently called Tom Wild, but I didn't even know that until I read the description on IMDb. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure they mentioned that, actually. But maybe we should at least talk about those two then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do that? Sure. Uh, so this guy, Tom Weil, he's a narcotics uh, cop, I guess, or agent. And uh, he gets killed during a gang fight with this uh, uh, these heroin smugglers. And uh, then for some reason, they go all Robocop on his ass and builds him up as a robot 
for some reason. Only it looks really stupid compared to... I think they're going for the Robocop vibe, but it looks like a bad cosplayer. Yeah. Uh, him aside, we have some characters that seem to be unnamed, but that's still pretty important. Uh, one is this uh, guy that seems to be a Chinese Taoist priest, kind of. And he seems to be the leader of this uh, criminal syndicate. And he's also kind of necromancer since he can use magic to create vampires and they serve as his henchmen. Uh, he... And there, then there seems to be this special vampire that looks like the others, but with a gorilla mask. And uh, that apparently is in love with some girl who is a ghost in some way. Yeah. Or a witch or something. <laughs> yeah, a witch or ghost or something. It's not really clear. SL4, this movie has several plots and they seem different from each other. And since it is one plot, it's about this, uh, I don't know if she's a ghost or a wizard or whatever, but this uh, woman with special powers. And she is in love with uh, this guy that became one of these vampires. And they reunite and now they want to get married. Uh, that seems to be one of the subplots. Another subplot is uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That uh, one of the agents of this, uh, like, uh, military wing that wants to take down this criminal syndicate, uh, she's called Sophie, and she gets captured, and they launch an operation to uh, rescue her. Uh, that's another subplot. That's probably the biggest one, but yeah. And then finally, we have uh, this uh, robot that they build, and he seems to be hunting down the criminal syndicate. And he's doing it like on his own, so he's not actually helping with the operation to rescue Sophie. I think they're going for the thing that he's supposed to be some uh, cool uh, lone wolf uh, killer guy, but it's just weird. Yeah, it's uh, it's different. Worth mentioning about the subplots is that uh, the whole marriage thing, uh, we see that quite early in the movie, but then it's uh, like at least 30 minutes before it's mentioned again. It's really weird. Yeah, we mentioned it in the start of the movie that uh, this uh, plot, uh, the funny thing about this uh, ghost lady, by the way, that she's introduced, and when she's introduced, she likes, gives this whole speech like within a minute about her background and why she's there and that she wants to kill the bad guy and so on. Like She spills everything right there, uh, which was very nice of her because it really made you understand, but it felt kind of stupid. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that happens like within the first 20 minutes of the movie. And I was thinking at least that, okay, this is probably going to be like one of the core plots of the movie. Like it's going to be a uh, red thread for the whole movie. It wasn't because then we don't see her again before, like right before the end. No, she's gone for like 80 minutes of the 90 minute movie. Yeah, pretty much. So this movie is, uh, uh, I think it's very called a mess because the plot is really everywhere. Most of the time you have no idea what people are doing or why they're doing it. And uh, who these people are. Yeah, it's pretty clear in the beginning about the heroin smugglers with the vampires. But uh, when other subplots get introduced... Uh it's easy to just get lost and not have any idea what's going on. So uh, here's a question for you. Do you think that they wanted to make this movie more of a comedy or do you think they're trying to be serious? I actually think they are trying to be serious, at least with the cyborg and uh, the priest guy who controls the vampires. Uh, But they, they fail miserably. On IMDb, it's categorized as action, horror, sci-fi. Wait, is it horror? Really? I guess vampires are Yeah, horror. yes, vampires. They're <laughs> scary. They jump around and shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I also think they try to make it serious. And uh, well, when you watch it, you don't really get the vibe that it is serious because... I laughed a lot during this movie, so I can say this is at the very least entertaining. Yeah, I laughed a lot too. 
Yeah, the action scenes are pretty cool <laughs> in a bad way. It looks pretty much as uh, when I was playing uh, war with my friends when I were like uh, 10 years old. Yeah, it's it has that vibe or like a early school project or something. Yeah, that too. So uh, we mentioned this also, but the intro scene was very, very powerful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It started very intensely. Okay. Uh, anyone want to describe it briefly? Uh, you can do it if you want. Uh, I, I don't know. Some, some soldiers are capturing this Chinese guy, or at least Asian guy. I'm not really sure. Because we're not really sure where this movie takes place. Uh, but uh, for some reason, these soldiers... I, I don't I barely remember. They shoot at some barrels and some snakes pop out, right? Yeah, and then they shoot at the snakes a lot. Yeah, and then they start screaming and they shoot off the lid of a casket, I guess. And then one of these hopping vampires jumps out. And kills and, them all. Yeah. Very strange, but pretty funny. Very scary start. It really sets the bar for this horror movie. Yeah, but then they go into the bad guy's lair, I guess. And they have these vampires. They have these uh, uh, markings, those tali- talismans or whatever they're called, that they put on the vampire's face so they are basically inactive. And then this uh, Chinese guy, he just fumbles around and he accidentally rips one of those off and uh, some other vampires jump around and it becomes this huge action scene in their laboratory. Yeah, there are a lot of fight scenes in this movie, uh, usually where they punch each other. Uh, like vampires punch people and people punch vampires. Yeah. While we're talking about the fights, I also noticed they use the same sound effect for every gunshot and for every punch in the movie. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I didn't I didn't notice, but I'm not surprised. And no. Uh, so, Victor, you want to describe the acting a bit? What did you think of it? The acting? Uh, well, I especially think about uh, the vampire controlling guy with his really quick hand gestures uh, using some sort of magic or whatever. I think it was supposed to look cool, but it just looked like he was trying to uh, communicate really fast in really bad sign language. Yeah, the first, uh, but in the first scene he was in, I thought he was okay. It wasn't that bad, but then it just got worse and worse over time, so you, that you wouldn't couldn't take him seriously at all. No, and maybe it's just me, but I have a hard time taking it seriously because uh, this movie doesn't explain anything to you. Like we said, we don't get any names. We don't even know where we are in the world, though it seems to be Asia somewhere. And they don't explain it. They just make it appear like the most natural thing in the world that this crime syndicate is trading heroin and they have vampires. Like, no explanation how they manage to create vampires and why they are doing it and why they don't just focus on the vampires if they have vampires. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's, this military subplot is really unnecessary, I think, where you're just going through the jungle and shooting at each other. Uh, and it's really confusing because it was hard for me, at least, to figure out who was who because they all look the same, basically. Yeah. And uh, since we haven't mentioned it yet, this movie is uh, dubbed by probably like two or three people. So yep. it sound it sounds like everyone has the same voice more or less. All the females has the same voice and there are at most two different male voices voicing everyone else and it sounds basically the same all the time. And the cyborg uh, voice it's basically just a male voice with a very simple reverb. I bet they spent like two minutes uh, editing that. Yeah. And also the lip sync is very off. Yeah, they shouldn't have dubbed this. It should have been just an, like a Chinese movie or Asian movie or whatever. 
Yeah, I agree. That although it, it is funnier this way. But they should have focused on the vampires, uh, the crime organization, and the cyborg guy. They, I feel like they try to pack too much in this movie. Like this subplot with the ghost and the vampire that are about to get married, for example. Uh, they could easily have cut that out because no one understands it anyway. And instead, it could give the time to explain a bit more about the military branch and the location they're in and maybe some background about how this criminalization can create vampires or whatever. Just a bit more info in general. And when that uh, girl came, the ghost or whatever, and uh, she explained exactly why uh, she was there, it was, there wasn't any point to it. It didn't help us understand the movie better at all. Yeah, that's the thing. When someone finally appears to tell things properly, uh, to explain how this is how it is, then she explains something we don't care about because it had nothing to do with anything else. Yeah, and the explanation doesn't really help explain anything. No, not really. No, it most certainly does not. All right, so uh, if we move on a bit, uh, there are there are some scenes that we probably should talk about uh, a bit more in depth. Uh, for example, when Sophie gets captured, uh, there's actually this scene where she actually gets raped. So... That really gives the vibe this an old movie because that wouldn't fly the No, it would not. No, it seemed pretty brutal. But uh, eh, then again, I guess they're trying to go for this action horror thing. That is true. I mean, yeah. Action horror sci-fi indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, action and sci-fi, sure. Uh, kind of action, I guess. And that's also yeah. a thing that uh, when Sophie gets captured, they are like, okay, how would we rescue her? And then they hire this uh, guy that kind of sounds like he's some, I don't know, some kind of badass mercenary or something. And they pay him $30,000 to bring her back. And okay, it's just that he appears completely out of the blue. Yeah, we yeah. don't know where they found him. He was just there. He's like Chinese Rambo. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. He's actually Chinese <laughs> Rambo. He, he actually is. He even has the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any scene in particular you want to talk about? Uh, I just found it weird that when they captured uh, Sophie and the other guys later on, they put them in this uh, like uh, prison cells, and they put them, uh, they bind them to chairs, and then put them under some kind of pipes that leak water drops on them. I didn't get that. What what was the point of that? It's Chinese it, water uh, torture. Yeah, but uh, she started screaming in pain after a few seconds. So yeah, that's not how it works. Maybe it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hot. It seems like they're sweating all the time. Shouldn't that be nice? Maybe it's really hot water. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Speaking of hot water, there was also a naked scene uh, where they uh, took a bath in uh, some sort of uh, spring or something. Or river. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it looked really rapey. Yeah, it looked very rapey at first, but then she was apparently into it, so it ended up not being rape, I think. Yeah, it started off really uncomfortable and uh, and weird, but then it just, oh, okay, let's have sex, whatever. Yeah, she told him to leave, and he undressed and jumped in the water <laughs> and uh, grabbed her. Yeah, is that normal? <laughs> Yeah, and then in the end, uh, there is a fight between this uh, crime boss and the ghost lady. And 
<laughs> like out of nowhere, she decides to take off part of her dress, like the top part, and throw at him to reveal her breasts. So, like, it was a very random move. So you can really tell that the director just felt that this movie needs some boobs. Yes. Yeah. Because it wasn't uh, that she used any magic or anything. She just <laughs> threw a piece of clothing at him. <laughs> yeah, and then she got killed and it's over. So, okay. Yeah. Really weird. Yeah, there, There is a lot to unpack in this movie if you go into the details. Like, uh, they also they also captured this guy that has a blue hat and he he's working for the criminal syndicate somehow. And suddenly, as he travels as the prisoners of the good guys, he suddenly seems to switch sides. So suddenly he's fighting along with them. That happened yeah. in like five seconds. Yeah, it was really confusing. Like, wasn't he a prisoner like two seconds ago? <laughs> yeah, he was. And then suddenly, a few minutes later, they, they give him a rifle and he's like, okay, let's, let's charge that drug factory. Let's kill them all. I don't think they even talked about it. They just gave him a rifle. It just happened. <laughs> yeah, like so much, like everything else in this movie, things just happen. They don't actually explain anything. It was the same when they made that guy into a cyborg. It was a really short scene. Uh, it was very easy to miss, and suddenly there was just a cyborg guy that played a huge part in the movie. Yeah, and the fighting scenes between the robots and the vampires. What? It was just the robot guy standing in the middle, and like three or four vampires, depending on the scene, just jumping around in a circle around him. And there were several scenes like that. Yeah, at least three or four scenes like that. Especially towards the end with the, yeah. the big battle. Yeah, but that was so weird. Also, He, he just uh, grabbed his rifle and started shooting. And the vampires kept jumping around in the same circle. And they got killed one by one because they just kept jumping into the gunfire. Yeah, he just held the gun and pulled the trigger every now and then. And they died. <laughs> like what? How is this supposed to help? And also, at what's end, they talk like uh, this robot uh, is kind of ruining their criminal <laughs> empire because they can't actually kill the bastard. But would he really be such a big threat? Because throughout the movie, you see him walking the entire time and he walks with heavy steps. You can hear him coming from miles away. Like, yeah. Any idiot can outrun him. And his uh, reaction time is uh, terrible. When he aims at something, it takes like one second before he actually pulls the trigger. Yeah, the thing is that he's supposed to be a robot, but he just has like a silver overalls on him. And it, and he walks like he's dancing that robot dance poorly. It's so stupid. I, I, why? Yeah. I actually don't even think it's made of metal, the thing he's wearing. No, no. No, it's, it's, it's not. Like no. some silvery overalls. And <sighs> technically, he's obviously not a robot or a vampire. Technically, he's a cyborg because he's a human. They gave robot parts. Yeah, and he's supposed to look like Robocop, although he does not. No, not at all. They should have really named this movie a Robot vs. Vampire because that would have been more accurate and it would have sounded cooler. And that would barely be accurate either, even. Uh, right now I'm looking at the co cover for the movie, the cover art for the movie, and he really looks like Robocop on the front and not at all like he looks like in the movie. Oh, yeah. And that vampire controller guy looks very monstrous on the cover, I see now. Or maybe that's not him. Maybe that's just a vampire. I, I have no idea. Well, at least uh, the way it looks on the cover, it does not look like that in the movie. No, they wanted it to look like this, but it didn't. <laughs> also, uh, what are you guys' thoughts about the uh, super vampire having a gorilla mask? Uh, was there any point in that? 
I was thinking maybe that was like a fully transformed vampire, maybe. I don't know. I I don't know what to make of it, but I, I must say it felt very random when this ghost woman suddenly charges in and says that she wants to marry this gorilla vampire. If I got it right, uh, when the, she was alive and the gorilla guy was alive, they were, were in love but couldn't be together. So uh, they... Uh, when they died, they thought they could at least be together in death. But uh, when they resurrected, that guy as a vampire, uh, yeah, that didn't work. That's how I got it, at least. Yeah, yeah. she did say that. And it's strange in this movie that it's, it's in, it takes place in Asia, but has so many Westerners, Europeans or Americans or whatever, and... They just seem to fit in. Like this ghost lady, she's not Asian. Nope. And uh, I'm maybe, yeah. There's a lot of Americans, American-looking people, and a few Mexican-looking people. People that seem pretty out of place, but I guess it works. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it, it's very diverse, at least wherever this country is. <clears throat> But at least the uh, Asian theme in it was definitely Chinese because of the Chinese uh, zombie types and the talismans. Yeah. The, I, yeah. The forest looked very Vietnamish in my eyes, but I guess there's uh, areas in China that looks like that as well. Yeah, yeah I guess. So something around China, I guess. We have no idea, no for sure, but no. Uh, so want to talk a bit more about the vampires. Uh, what are your thoughts on like, their behaviors, the powers, their makeup, everything? Well, I don't know about their powers. The super vampire could shoot fireworks from his arms, which was pretty cool. But the others just jumped around and hit and strangled people, I think. Yeah, there were were a few times where they actually bit some uh, soldiers to death and stuff. Yeah, power-wise, they're not very impressive. They seem to be more or less people that jump around, and I guess they're a bit stronger and they are tougher. Yeah, they they can take a few more bullets. And uh, they didn't seem to be able to think at all, because it was like they just followed people automatically to kill them. Uh, jumped around yeah so their movements were just pretty much hilarious not really intimidating at all but what do you think of the makeup and such do you think it was well done uh compared to the uh, other uh, bar of the movie that was uh, pretty good Still not yeah. good, but compared to the rest of the movie, it wasn't bad. I think yeah. if I just take them, I think they actually look pretty cool, but they kind of ruin that coolness when they start jumping around. And they have their arms outstretched in front of them at all times. Like flipping and flopping their hands up and down. Yeah, really intimidating. And there is this scene towards the end with the uh, ghost lady and her fiancé where they play like uh, this, uh, what's the word, this erotic music in the background. <laughs> and uh, this vampire, he begins to like wave his hands up and down as he approaches her <laughs> and she does some suggestive movement. And uh, I wasn't sure what to make of it. Yeah, and then she moves right through him first, but then they touch each other, so I don't know what she did there. That was also a very confusing scene, because then Robo Vampire arrives, and he stops in front of her friends to shoot them, but she persuades him not to, because she says that they were in love, and I think what happens next is that Robo Vampire has a flashback from uh, his human life when he was in love with a woman. And so he decides to leave, but then she still attacks him when he tries to walk away. Yeah. And that was probably a bad move. 
as we have said, very little in this movie actually makes sense. But at least that's jumping vampires. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do you have anything else you want to bring up, or should we just go to rating this movie? Well, um, no, not really. I think we got it, but I'd like to add uh, at some parts, the background music actually wasn't too bad. Wow. At some parts. Yeah, most part it was just weird and not very fitting. High praise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can start today. Uh, go ahead. Well, yeah, this movie had its funny moments, uh, lots of them. The plot was impossible to understand. The characters' personalities were hard to understand. Uh, so. Yeah, just because of the funny moments, I laughed a lot. I will give it a 4 out of 10. Mm. Yeah, if I go next, I can uh, I can say that the action scenes were pretty funny. Unintentionally, unintentionally funny, probably. Uh, but still entertaining. Uh, I... It really bothered me that the dubbing, the dubbing really bothered me. It just, it's like the same guy doing all the voices. It's just annoying. He's not even good at it. So why, why do this? Uh, and the plot is pretty much impossible to follow, especially because you don't know where you are or who anyone is. Like, who makes a movie where you don't know what any of the characters are called? It's just, you're you're not caring about anything then, because you have no one to care about, because you don't know who they are. Um, I guess I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. All right, so uh, to me, it is one of those movies... It- it's obviously pretty bad, but it goes in territory where it becomes bad to the point where it's funny. So uh, if you are a few friends and you want to watch uh, something that's so silly that it makes you laugh, then there's something you can watch for sure. It's free on YouTube after all. So it's certainly not a good movie because plot makes no sense. But still entertaining, and it, it has vampires at least, and vampires are jumping, and that's very, very <laughs> funny actually. <laughs> like it looks so silly. I know it's uh, like a real mythological creature, but a jumping vampire—you can't make that look cool. Nope. Uh, they can't even walk. They they move by jumping forward like a rabbit. <laughs> So yeah, I had good laughs at this movie, so in the end I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. Yeah, it would probably be a good movie to watch if you have something to drink or or otherwise something else. Yeah, I think so. You could probably make it some kind of drinking game, like uh, uh, every time uh, every time a vampire kills someone, you take a shot. Every time a vampire jumps. No one wants to get that run <laughs> no. Oh, well. All right, so that's it. And remember that you can always contact us at bmso.contact at gmail.com. So thank you for today, and bye. Bye. Bye.